And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments and have the testimony of Yahweh. This is the church of Smyrna getting ready to be beheaded because they did not get taken when the woman was given two wings of a great eagle to fly out into her place and the earth opening up and helping them. The ones who got caught up in that Zechariah 14 raid, they're going to go be beheaded and the dragon is going to miss that one third. He ain't going to be able to get that remnant. But he's going to go and make war with the rest of her seed that other portion of it that's going to have to be beheaded now here's the thing you don't want to be in that group that that dragon who's mad as hell because he didn't get everybody like he wanted to and spiritual power came to the one third and they was given wings to fly into her place where she's kept from the face of the serpent for three and a half years and you didn't keep the day of atonement so 10 days later you're the church of Smyrna being faithful 10 days unto death. Now you will be given a crown of life as long as you do what the scripture says down here that you keep the commandments, right? Which keep the commandments and have the testimony. You finally going to have the testimony of Yahweh Shai instead of the elder apostles of GMS or Sakari or whatever camp you, you tend to flavor. You got to go through the door now, y'all. That's the reason why I've been trying to show these judgments, their categories. You're going to fall into danger and be beheaded if you're following the hireling. Let's go show that because I don't want to just say that. This devil is coming and as soon as he comes and we're right here soon as he comes the lord is going to snatch the hundred and forty four thousand in that same hour the scripture says a great earthquake happens that's the sixth seal breaking this begins the day of his wrath against them they planning against us but the lord's going to turn around open up the earth help the woman swallow up the flood and and the remnants not going to be cut off from the city but he's going to hold on to them because of that that opening up the ground and the Lord is accurate. He's accurate with that ground opening up swallowing up who we want to get This is how this thing is going to take place Man, I don't see hardly no comments on the comment board for the whole time. I was saying that. <laughs> Man, but I see we got some folks in here though uh, Are y'all understanding what's being brought out and and can you see the picture of how this thing is going to go down? Um yeah, so, you know, anybody have any questions so far about about what I've brought out so far? I know Judean tribe, you said you had a question. I hopefully have answered that. Uh, the question you asked is, do we get new bodies? Yes. Yes. His glory shall be seen on us. It's going to be realm against realm, as the apocrypha says. All right. Realm against realm. When the trumpet sounds in the Feast of Trumpets, the dead is going to rise incorruptible. And whoever's alive and remain will be caught up. And this corruption will put on incorruption and this mortem shall put on immortality. Then will be brought to pass the saying death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where's thy victory? Right? So, yes, we will have spiritual power in new bodies as the hunters. The, the, as the angel of the Lord before them for the house of David, because that's the 144,000. They're going to be as he is because they're going to see him in his glory that he had with the father from the beginning. And when they see him, they're going to be just like him. And the ones that's feeble among us, the one third, going to be as David. And the house of David is going to be as the angel of the Lord. So, yes, you're going to have spiritual powers and spiritual bodies. All right. The Lord said he would make us a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Right. 
Let's go get some of those precepts right quick. All right, right quick. Let's go see. Uh, let's go look at Jeremiah right quick first. All right, we're going to stay in Jeremiah for a minute. This Jeremiah 16 and 14. The Lord said in verse five, it says, for thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go into lamentation or bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercies. Both the great and the small shall die in the land. And they shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make make themselves bald for them. Neither shall men tear themselves in the morning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give the, the cup, give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. See that? Thou shalt not go into the house of feasting to sit with them to eat and drink. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your days the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the, vo and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. You see how IUIC is partying, boy. It seems like every video that I go by of some IUIC members, they is partying right now. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great, great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we've committed against the Lord our power? Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me. saith the Lord and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. So he's saying the reason is because our forefathers did not follow him. And verse 12 says, and ye have done worse than your fathers. For behold, ye walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. This is the same issue that's going on right now. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land. And this was for us being cast out of our land, right? Uh, into a land that you know not, neither ye nor your fathers. And there you shall serve other gods day and night where I will not show you favor. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, so this shall no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all, all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. And we just saw that when the six seal breaks and that earthquake comes, because right in the middle of that, the Lord's going to snatch the hunters and then they're going to come back. Like it said in, in, in uh, uh, what was that Malachi? That then shall you return and discern between him that serveth the most high and him that serveth them not. Right. For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face and neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. So the Lord can see all of it through those spirits. You see. Uh, let's look at the book of Jeremiah. The, um, let's get another precept on that. in Jeremiah right quick. All right. Let's look at Jeremiah the 23rd chapter. It says, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Now you see right here the coming of Messiah, right? The righteous branch, the coming Messiah, the righteous branch. So let's take a look at this because a lot of people would like to attribute Jeremiah 23 to the Christian pastors that deceived us. 
But on the contrary, the Lord is talking about the nation of Israel. It says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock. And that's exactly what this awakened construct is set up to do. It's set up to scatter the flock. And driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. Now, who's going to visit them? The 144,000 is going to visit them. But these hirelings are going to flee. They're, they don't care for the sheep. All right. We read that in John 10. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. So that lets you know that this is an end time situation here. He's pissed off at the pastors. They don't feed the people right. They're scattering the flock by what they're doing. And he said he's going to gather the remnant of his flock out of all countries, whether he's driven them and bring them again into their folds that they may be fruitful and increase that Isaiah the 60th chapter can happen. Arise and shine. And, the, you know, the heathens will cleave to us and we'll go back into the land and we'll, they'll bring all their beasts to us so we can set up and eat. Right. And the 144,000 is going to be facilitating that return, too, because not everybody's coming back by chariots. And we'll, we'll show that. All right. We're going to show that. It says, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Those are those people who he said, those two witnesses that's going to have power, that's going to prophesy for that time frame. And they shall fear no more. Why? Because they're going to be a fire by night and a cloud by day as a defense, just like it was before. Nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. This is not the righteous branch that's before us. When they say that King Masha was David. Well, King Masha is dead, so he can't be David. Because the Lord said that he's going to raise up to David a righteous branch. And a king shall reign and prosper. That's Yahushai, And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. You see that? That's interesting. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth with brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. You see that how it's just repeated what we said, what it just got through saying in, in chapter 16 it's repeated again. But it's letting you know a little bit more information above this, that the Lord is pissed off at these pastors that are scattering his people. He's going to send the right people to teach. The house of David. But the Lord lived with brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries where I've driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. See, this says false prophets denounced here. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine had overcome because of the Lord, because of the words of his holiness. And for the land is full of adulterers. Who, what are adulterers? People, that, women that sleep with other men beside their husband. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right. For both the prophet and the priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as a slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. So you understand that the Lord is going to bring this thing to a head with these men. He's going to deal with them. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people to err. 
That's the same thing Th Thyatira, the Christian church, is that prophetess Jezebel, right? Who was over the northern kingdom with her king Ahab, who was causing the people to err in the church of Thyatira, which is the Christian church. And eat things sacrificed to idols. And I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. And they strengthen them hand, they strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and as the inhabitants of Gomorrah. And that's what they do. They strengthen their hands in evildoers. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the word of the prophets that prophesy unto you. Y'all see that? They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They're not breaking down to y'all the way this thing is going to go down. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For and that's what they tell you. If you if you follow in the men of GMS, then you're gonna be all right. I did a lesson where uh, one of the brothers of GMS was saying, "Listen to GMS only if you want to live." I had to I had to do a lesson and rebuke that because it, this is the way they do it. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived? and heard his word who have marked his word and heard it behold a whirlwind of the lord is gone forth in fury even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked the anger of the lord shall not return till he have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly and that's what I'm trying to get you to consider perfectly today. Because that's what Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter is speaking of. It has a end time connotation to it. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they ran. I have not chose. I have not spoken to them yet. They prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. If I had came to the men of GMS and showed them the order to harvest and the judgments of the seven churches and told them, look, judgment is going to begin with us. These are the judgments. This is the church of Philadelphia. Here's Smyrna. Here's the reason why the people are beheaded in Smyrna. And here how the feast days are a timeline. And we got to, you know, if they had, if they had hearkened to it, they could have taught these things on a broad scale, but they don't. They're taken away from the prophecies of the book. It says, I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I should not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I've heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name saying I have dreamed I have dreamed and you see these men talking about they've had dreams and like that man that I was showing y'all from the Dallas camp and I didn't show you that video of the dreams he said he had but in those dreams he was talking about the, the hundred and four thousand having power and and you know about actually basically about all of us getting power and talking about hunters in his dream but they're not bringing out the Bible. They're not showing you the prophetic things to come because they're not allowed to. They have handlers. They have somebody else in between them and the most high God that's regulating and dictating what they can say and what they can't say. 
Therefore, the spirit is not dealing with them. He will not share his glory with anyone else. Which think to cause my people to forget my name. And he's not talking about Yahweh. He's talking about that power of attorney. By their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that have dreamed, let him tell a dream. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? And that's what I say to that man in Dallas. If you had a dream, tell your dream. I'm going to bring out the word. I'm going to speak the words of the most high because that is that name being delivered into the earth. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. And that's exactly what the men of these camps are doing. They are stealing the words from his neighbor. They don't want you to understand these things with the spirit is saying to the churches, nor the order of the harvest, nor the great earthquake, nor how the Lord's going to take care of all these things like I like I'm showing you guys. Behold, I am against them that pro prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people or the prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, what is the burden of the Lord? Or what is this prophecy? Right. What is what is what is this? The burden is his prophecy or his, you know, his his will being done. Thou shalt say unto them, what burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. Let me go get that because I want you all to see that that's an oracle. Um, the burden. Here it is, oracle, utterance. Load, bearing, tribute, burden, lifting, load, burden, lifting, uplifting to that which the soul lifts itself up. Bearing, carrying, tribute, that which is carried or brought or born. We know this doesn't mean something that's carried. If they want to know what, what he's saying. What is the prophecy? What is the oracle? What is the utterance of the Lord? All right. That's what that's speaking of. So what did he say when they asked him, what is the oracle of the Lord? Let me go back up. That I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. As for the prophet and the priest and the people. Salakia. <coughs> as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Thus shall ye say everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother. What hath the Lord answered and what hath the Lord spoken? See, you're going to ask him when somebody asks me, I'm going to tell him, well, what did he say? You tell me. Just like when those unwise virgins came and said, give us of your oil. They said, nah, go, go get from them to sell. This is the rendition the Lord is painting the picture of here. And the burden of the word of the Lord shall ye mention no more for every man's word shall be his burden for ye have perverted the words of the living God of the Lord of hosts our power so the Lord is saying hey what you understand is yours it says not to mention no more and that's the reason why I haven't been so you know adamant about doing a whole bunch of lessons I decided to go ahead and do this lesson tonight because Jacob's trouble is upon us, and I want to give one last hoorah of a warning. You know what I'm saying? Because 
We I've already bled it out for almost two years, trying to wake people up to the fact that this construct is wicked and it's evil. But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent you, saying ye shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold, because the Lord said, I didn't send them. I did not send those prophets, yet they went. I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake the city that I gave and your fathers, gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence, and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame, which shall not be forgotten. You see? So you have to understand that the Lord is not dealing with these false prophets and the people that listen to them, that he set up to be a stumbling block, like we read from the beginning, to see whether or not you was going to come through your house or some other way. He set these hirelings up just for that purpose. Let's go look at the book of Ezekiel, the 14th chapter. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me that sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idol in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. And a lot of people have men as idols in their heart. You can see it every time General Johanna steps out on the mic and all the rest of the men lord him. The same thing with Bishop Nate at IUIC, the same thing with the apostles at GMS, the same thing with any and all these camps. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, your power, repent and turn yourself from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. The scripture says, flee, flee from the stranger. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idol in his heart and put it forth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. So this says everybody, the house of Israel or the stranger. That goes for these nations also. Because you got a lot of people of the other nations that are learning from GMS or Sakari or any of these other camps. And they're also following false prophets. Right? They got to follow the right ones. And I will set my face against that man and I will make him a sign in a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now that cut him off is Karath. We'll go get it real quick. I know I brought this out in many other lessons, but we're going to get it as if somebody is in here watching this for the very first time. All right, let's look at, I will cut him off. All right. Strong's H, 3772. Karath, Karath, to cut, to cut off, cut down, cut off a body part, cut out, eliminate, kill, cut a covenant, to cut off, to cut off a body part, behead, to behead, to behead. Now look at the scripture right here in Revelation, the 20th chapter. In the fourth verse, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded 
for the witness of Yahawashai, not for the witness of Tahar or Gabar or Ramlab or uh, Yohanna or, or Bishop Nathaniel or any of these other fools. They were beheaded for the witness of Yahawashai because they were worshiping idols. They had idols in their hearts and they was trying to come up another way. And the Lord deceived them just like he deceived that prophet. So they would be a sign and a proverb. That's what the scripture just said here. Right. And let's on this other tab. Let's go real quick and get Russian three. Everything's locked into these judgments. Uh, matter of fact, it's Revelation two. In, in the uh, church of Smyrna. Right. The message to Smyrna. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, right? These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, you notice he said he didn't say he was going to make them come and worship before their feet. Not to this church, because they got to die. To Philadelphia, he said the same thing, but he said he's going to make those that are of the synagogue of Satan come and worship before your feet. So the scripture says in, in verse 10, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And we just read that in Zechariah the 14th chapter that half the city is going forth into captivity. That ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. So these men, because they put something else before the Lord. They got to go out this way. You don't want to be of that group. The scripture says, let he that hath an ear hear what the spirit saith unto the seven churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death because they're going to be risen when Yahweh shall come. But of a lesser rank. Not of those men who were alive and remained and, 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 and were kept. And some brought back into the land by chariots and others brought back in through other means. But these men are going to have to be, you know, they're going to have to give their lives for it. They will be caught up when the devil comes against us and to go into captivity. As the scripture says here. But you see, it says that they're going to be beheaded. He's going to make a sign and a proverb of them, like it says in the book of Ezekiel. Was I just in Ezekiel in one of these? Where was I? All right, let's go back and get it in, in Ezekiel. All right, let's go back and get it in Ezekiel. The 14th chapter. I, I must have covered that tab up with something else. All right, so it said he would make them a, a sign and a proverb and he would cut them off, right? Cut them off or Karath or behead, right? You see that? Where he said, be faithful 10 days unto death, right? 10 days. We see the cut off. We see the beheaded. We see the 10 days. We see the sign in the proverb being cut off because they got idols in their hearts. You go back in the law. Go back and look in this law, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, right? The 29th verse. This is the timeline in Leviticus 23. All the feast days are a timeline. All right. So it says whatsoever soul that it that it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day. He shall be cut off from among his people. Why? Because the woman's going to get two wings of a great eagle and she's going to fly into her place. Where she's kept from the face of the serpent for time, time and half a time. You see where it says day of atonement right there, right? When you go back above the day of atonement in Leviticus 23 and... Starts in 23. 
Here it is in 23, 23. So it says, and, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, right, which usually falls around September for us on the Gregorian calendar, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. All right. So this is the trumpets. This is when the one third will be taken. That remnant will be taken and given two wings of a great eagle to fly into her place. Right. This is when the dead in Yahweh will rise. And, you know, that's part of the uh, spiritual powers and all of that and being brought back into the land. But the Lord said 10 days later, and just like we read in in um, the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, after that woman is taken 10 days after that, those men are going to be beheaded. He's going to go after them to keep the commandments after that. Right. And that's down here in verse 29. He shall be cut off. Right. Cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. And this is the group that takes that mark, because in order for you to work, you have to take the devil's mark. As you can see, anybody that don't take it, going to get locked up in jail. They're going to lose their jobs, just like those nurses did down there in Houston. First, they had a little lawsuit and they was trying to make a stand. And that judge threw, their, threw them out, said, nope. And just yesterday or day before yesterday, they was all fired. It's coming. Anybody that works in that day, they're going to be among the two thirds. Anybody that uh, doesn't keep the day of atonement, they're going to be cut off or they're going to because you can't make atonement for your sins through Tahar. You can't make atonement for your sins through a, 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 a Gabar and a Ramla. Neither can you under Yohanna or, or, or Bishop Nathaniel from IUIC or, 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 or Bishop Rakah from GOCC or, or, or Zabak from HOI or any of these other camps. They are all hirelings. They were set up. The Lord did not send them, but they ran. The Lord set them up as a stumbling stone. The tribe of Gad is a serpent in the way to bite a man in the heels and make him fall backwards. Again, that's the reason why Dan is not of that number of the 144,000, because Dan was prophesied in Genesis 49 for his job in the last days is to be a serpent to, to make men fall backwards. In the same way that Judas was prophesied before time, and it was written that he would betray our Lord. These, This is a fractal. This is the same word cut off, karath, which means to be head. All right. To cut off a body part, to cut out, to eliminate, to cut a covenant, to cut off a body part, be head. And we saw that over here in Revelation. Beheaded. We saw it in Revelation uh, under Smyrna. This is how you link up the feast day and the timeline and the people that don't keep the day of atonement. And we see in Ezekiel right here is because they're following false prophets. The Lord said they've got an idol in their heart and he's going to make a sign and a proverb and cut them off from the midst of his people. And you shall know that I'm the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he spoke a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him, and I will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall even be as the punishment of him that seeketh to him. Both of them got to go. The prophet and the one that seeks to him. The Lord said he got to go. That the house of Israel may no more go astray from me. From me, neither be polluted anymore with their transgressions, that they may be my people, not under some man and in a camp, and I may be their God, saith the Lord. So you got to understand that that is the reason that, you know, we're dealing with all that. Let me get all that off the screen. All right. 
and we're going to hit it from another angle uh, because I want to show you that, you know, in Jeremiah, we'll go back into Jeremiah. All right. We showed you Jeremiah 30, that that day is great. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. He shall be saved out of it. We showed Isaiah 60 where it says arise and shine thy light has come i showed you jeremiah 23 where the lord broke down that he's going to do that just like it ain't going to be saying no more blessed be the lord that brought him out of the land of egypt but you know out of the north country and it went into a little bit more detail in jeremiah 23 than it did in jeremiah 14. all right now we're going to go get jeremiah uh 50 right Let's get Jeremiah. Actually, let's get Jeremiah uh, 49. All right. All right, so it says concerning Edom, thus said the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Why is it speaking about this? <clears throat> because you see, Balaam is an Edomite. Balak is a Moabite. The Chinese or the Moabites have hired Balaam, Edom, to cast spells over the nation of Israel. We owe the country of China a lot of money. Balak hired Balaam with the rewards of his divination to be a false prophet or a soothsayer over the nation. So where's their wisdom at anymore? Where, where is it that they know more than us now? They don't. They're beneath us, even though they were on the heights. Now the Lord is rising up the house of David and they have more saint. They have been sanctified through the truth and they don't have an idol in their heart. And the spirit of the Lord has dwelt with them and has supped with them. And anything they ask the father, the Lord's going to give it to them. And that's that power of attorney. You got to come out from under these false prophets. There's no more wisdom in teeming or the people that have sold out to him. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If these by night, they would destroy till they've had enough. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places. I have uncovered his secret places. He's sitting on us in the sides of the north through these camp leaders that have sold out to him. And he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. Let thine widows trust in me. That's interesting that he would say that because we're going to have his children, Esau, Edom's and his widows as servants and handmaids. They're going to cleave to us and be our servants. We're going to take them and them captives whose captives we were and rule over our oppressors like we read in the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter. For thus saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink the cup have assuredly drunken, and thou art he that shall altogether go unpunished. Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. And we know over in Lamentations 3, it says that Edom is going to drink of that cup, right? For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her, and rise up to the battle. Now, this is in Obadiah also, just like that verse above that was in Obadiah. We read that 
you know, when it talks about the grape gleaners coming, right? We also read that in Obadiah. Keep that in mind. There's a rumor that's going to go forth. There's going to be a decree that goes forth to the nations to come against her in battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. Thy terribleness have deceived thee in the pride of thine heart. O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, that holdest the heights of the hill. Though thou shouldest make, why did they hold what? The heights of the hill. They're on the heights and their pergamous agents that they've hired over us. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. This is Esau Edom's last final enchantment against us to try his best through Balaam and the agents of Balaam. Balaam is in the Dukes of Edom. All you got to do is go back into uh, Esau Edom and his lineage and read that chapter back in, uh, what is that, 36 chapter, I think it is. Uh, let me see real quick. Let me get one of these. <clears throat> it's locked. Uh, these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. When you roll down here under all these dukes, you get down here to uh, what is his father's name? His father's name was Beor. Okay, here it is right here. It says, And Bella, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom. Now, this Beor is Balaam's father, and that Bella is Balaam's brother. They come out of the nation of Esau, Edom. Balaam is an Edomite. Let's look at Beor real quick. That's his father. Oh, I looked at Bella. Salaki, let me go back. That's his brother, Bella. That's Balaam's brother. We want Beor, the father, H 1160. Strong's H 1160. Beor. Beor. Which means burning. Father of Balaam. Father of Bela, king of Edom. So these two are brothers. Um, Balaam and, and Bela and Beor is their father. All right. These are the descendants of Edom. Esau, Edom. Right. So they hold the height of the hill. Balaam does. Balaam was taken to the heights under the church of Pergamos. Let's go get that and let's start comparing that. We already did Philadelphia. We've done Smyrna. Let's look at quick nav real quick and get Pergamus, matter of fact, Pergamus is in this same chapter. There it is right there. Right? Where Satan's seat is. I know thy works. Now the word Pergamus means what? Let's get that. Strong's G, 4010. Pergamus. Pergamus, all right. Which means height. Or elevation you see that so they hold the height of the hill he's sitting on the heights in Isaiah 14 right he said he would exalt himself above the stars of the Most High uh, in verse here it is For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The devil is sitting on top of us on the heights. So as you can see, he said he would sit on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He will be like the most high. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to deceive the nation of Israel. 
He's sitting on us. Like we read back here in Jeremiah, that hold us the height of the hill. Like we went over here and showed that Balaam is uh, an Edomite who was hired by Balak, the Moabite, and that Pergamos is the heights. I want to link these precepts so it's no denying it for y'all. Okay? Let's go back to Jeremiah. Though thou shouldest make thy nest high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Why? Because these men who are sitting on the heights on top of us and deceiving us, and a lot of us have them as, as idols in our hearts and are going to have to be the church of Smyrna because of it. The Lord said he's going to bring them down. That thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, saith the Lord. No man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. And we know that's Babylon's fate, right? Behold. He shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. Do you see that? Just like that rendition in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, when all nations come against Jerusalem and half the city goes into captivity, but the remnant would not be cut off from the city. And then the Lord said he would rise up and fight for us. Right. Let's get that back on the screen. And Zechariah, 14th chapter. What he say? He gonna go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. When they come against us and get that division, that spoil shall be divided. That's one third and two third. When he get those ones that need to be got, and a lot of y'all's algorithms are showing that you're watching the men of GMS and Sakari and mine too. But the Lord ain't gonna let. If the Lord knows who's got them men as idols in their hearts and who don't. The Lord knows who's watching them as a watchman and marking those that are causing divisions contrary to the gospel and those that are lording them and worshiping them. The spoil shall be divided. The ones that are worshiping these men got to go another route. They got to go get beheaded. But I want to put this back up there because the Lord will go forth and fight. Right now, let's go back. Therefore, no, behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? You see how the Lord is, is showing the difference. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he that hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. You see that? And the least shall be the greatest in the kingdom. This is not talking about Amalek drawing somebody out. I've heard people bring this rendition out speaking about that. That's not what it's talking about. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, at the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pain. See that? Woo! That's beautiful. So you have to understand that the Lord has got, or I should say, the Lord has allowed Esau Edom to sit on top of us and to, to deceive us, but the Lord is going to bring him down from his high place, including the men that he have sold out to him. They are also going to flee. They are also going to have a problem. But the house of David is going to rise up and they're going to be the ones who are going to lead you through the door. Let's go now to.
Jeremiah 50, right? The word of the Lord that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken and Baal is confounded and Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. And, and, and Baal and Merodach, this is just double straits or double, uh, that comes from bitter, bitterness. It's describing Babylon. It's another name for Babylon, right? For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. Now we know that that's the Medes that are going to come against her from other portions of scripture that we'll get into. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, going and weeping, shall they go and seek the Lord their God. It's always talking about seeking the Lord, man. It's not talking about seeking nothing else. And they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Many people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill and forgotten their resting place. And that's a lot of them have, you know, they say, well, I started off looking at this camp and I, then I went to watching this one and looking at that one. And I did the same thing because that's what they're designed to do is to scatter you. You can tell something ain't right in each one of them. But some of y'all have settled in. And they've become your idols now. But a lot of us have been just lost sheep and been scattered because the shepherds have caused us to go astray. All they have found them devoured them. And their adversaries said, we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as he, the he goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence shall she be taken. Their arrows shall be as the mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine inheritance. Because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass, and billow as bulls. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land in a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited. But it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all of her plagues. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned a great sin, have sinned against the Lord. Shout against her round about. She have given her hand, her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she have done, do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. Now, who is that? The sower and the one that's handling the sickle, the sickle. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people. and They shall flee everyone to his own land. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria has devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and at that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. 
and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found. For I will pardon them who I reserve. That's that remnant. Go up to the land of Marathon, even against it. Now, this is that land of bitterness. Let me just go get that for y'all right quick. It means to be bitter, a double bitterness. That's what America is, is, is basically a nickname for Babylon, but that's what Amer, Mar, that Mar means bitter. Uh, here it is. Strong's age, 4850. Barra. Barra. Another name for Babylon, double rebellion. You see that? All right. And a lot of these words in here, if you look up the words, it gives you a real clear picture of what is speaking of against the inhabitants of Picog. Let's look at that real quick. Strong's age, 6489. Code. Double Picard. rebellion. Double rebellion and visitation because the Lord is about to visit them. Right? There's a lot of mysteries that are unlocked in looking up the words to these things so you can see what the Lord is because he's speaking in omen nomens throughout all these scriptures too. All right. How is the hammer of the whole earth? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go up against the land of Miratham and even against it and against the inhabitants of P Picard. Waste and utterly destroy after him, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I've commanded thee. The sound of of battle is in the land and of great destruction. See that? The Lord is saying it's time to go up against her. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the, the nations? I have laid a snare for thee. Just like we said in Micah 2, even though they devise iniquity, the Lord said he going, he's planning something against them. They're not going to remove their necks from. And thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. See, they're not aware. Apparently, as soon as they try to come door to door and try to rush on us like that and, and rush the city, the Lord is going to let the ground open up on them. It's going to be time for his elect to be snatched. The elect of the elect first as the first fruits. And then, of course, that woman given two wings of a great eagle. But first, she's going to be made new threshing instruments and she's going to thresh them first. See? The one third is going to have power also. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Mm. Thou art found and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord. The Lord had opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans because he's going to just like that work the weapons of his indignation is going to be all the arrows shot into this place but again that's the final conclusion of it all after everything is done to her before the Lord finally throws those missiles into her all right because like I said and we'll show that here just momentarily uh, where the Lord is going to make us new sharp threshing instruments Babylon is the threshing floor Babylon is the threshing floor. This is where the wheat and tear get separated. This is where the grapes uh, get taken off the vine of the heathen nations and cleave to us. And we get ready to go back into our land. We're going to win the fight. The saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess it. That's what the Bible says. All right. And at the end of it all, there's going to be plenty of missiles for this place. Right. Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly. Let nothing be of her be left. Slay all of her bullocks. Remember that bullocks right there. Remember the bullocks. Like I told you, Balaam sacrificed on every altar seven bullocks and seven rams. One, on, one bullock and a ram on each altar. And let them keep that in mind. And let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them. For their day has come, the time of their visitation. You see, that's that visitation. We just looked up that word, pickle, right? 
the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the visit, the vengeance of his temple. This is the house of David. The voice of them that flee and escape. Remember, she's given two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into her place. Out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord, our power, the vengeance of his temple, because those men are going to be executing his vengeance in the earth. Call together the archers against Babylon, all ye that bend the bow. Camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she had done, do unto her. For she had been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O most proud saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. <coughs> For thy day is come, and the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And that's both northern and southern kingdom here together. So anybody that believes otherwise, they're going off. They're going off. You know, there's a lot of people out there that come against the, the northern kingdom. That's also a part of the division and the scattering that this construct is designed to do. Okay. It says, a sword is upon the Chaldeans. Wait a minute. I skipped something, didn't I? Yeah. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of what? Host is his name. He's got an army. And he shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may rest, give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. We know that rest is not buying, selling, or working. We finally going to be out of the hands of this devil. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. You see? Because she's got some men running with her. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dope. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall shall be dismayed. So you see, she's got some liars too, right? Keep that in mind. A sword is upon their house, their, their horses and the, their chariots and all the mingled people that are in the midst of her and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed. See that? Because we're going to come out possessing all kind of gold. We read that when they had in Isaiah 60 talking about all the gold and silver and cattle and everything else, right? Therefore, uh, a, a drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. For it is the land of graven images. And they are mad upon their idols, man. Even in the nation of Israel of the waking community, they are mad upon their idols because that woman has liars with her. All right? Um, I just seen a, a comment on the comment board. Uh, we get to it though. Um, wherefore the wild beast of the desert with the wild beast of the island shall dwell there and the owl shall dwell therein and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof saith the Lord. So shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, a people shall come forth from the north, and a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow at the lands, they are cruel, 
and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array, like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pains as a woman in travail. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong. But I will make them suddenly run away from her who is a chosen man and who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her. For who is like me and who will appoint me the time and who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. That he that taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. So you see that the earth is moved just like that great earthquake that happens right when the Lord stands up to fight for us and snatches those hunters. You see it all fall into place, precept upon precept, everywhere we go, future connotation, we're seeing a great earthquake and some hunters coming, followed by missiles from all the rest of the nations. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 51. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And I will send unto Babylon fanners, and they shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth up himself and his brigadine, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her host. Thus the slain shall fall in the, in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel have not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. And be not cut off. Don't be cut off, y'all. Don't be cut off. Don't be cut off. Do I have to go get it? It's going to say behead to cut off a body part. That's what it's going to say. Don't be beheaded in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. And he will render unto her a recompense. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. And that wine is also being poured out. And it's a lie. It's a lie like we read in the chapter before this. And it's coming out of the mouth of her false prophets, out of her soothsayers. These are the, the last final enchantment that we have to get past. This awakened community, these hirelings, the curse of Balaam. This is what we got to overcome. All right. Babylon has suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take bomb for her pain. If so, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us. Go everyone into his own country. You don't want to be cut off and be cut off from your people and not be able to go back to your land. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up to the skies. The Lord have brought forth our righteousness. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have risen up the spirit of the kings of the, of the Medes. There it is for his device against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Again, that's his temple made without hands. All right. Set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong 
set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. As soon as they try to come, he's going to open up that ground, swallow up the flood, snatch his elect, and the remnant going to be given new sharp threshing instruments, having teeth. They're going to thresh this place and then fly back into their place where they will be kept from the face of the serpent. This is how it's going to go down. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. The Lord of hope hath sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill thee with men as the caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against thee. He hath made the earth by his, by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood. Is falsehood. And there's no breath in them. Every man is brutish, meaning stupid. In his knowledge. They are vanity, the work of heirs, the work of heirs. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them. What portion? That portion of the elect. He is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. This is the Lord of armies again. And this portion of Jacob that the scripture is speaking about is that one third. that's about to receive this spiritual power as you're going to see. Verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. And I and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. So the Lord said the shepherd and his flock too now. Because there's some wicked shepherds and some wicked flocks. All right. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. And it's grievous in our sight, the sight of the righteous, to see all this wickedness. Not only amongst the heathens that are against us, but our own people that have sold out to them that are also against us. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. And I will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a, a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set ye up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Arad, many Ashkenaz. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holes. Their might have failed. They have became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end and that the passages are stopped and the reeds have burned with fire and the men of war are frightened. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her yet a little while. 
and the time of her harvest has come. You see, because you, they're going to thresh her. They're going to get spiritual power. When that ground open up, when the, when the 144 is gone and that great earthquake happens and the one third gets that spiritual power, they're going to thresh her before the time of the harvest come where they're snatched by the chariots and took back into the land. There's going to be a threshing that takes place first. You see? And they're going to be able to fly back into their place. But that's not the whole entire nation. That's the, the southern kingdom. The scripture says he will save the tents of Judah first. And I'm going to show y'all that. Matter of fact, let me read the rest of this and then I'm going to go show y'all that. That there's a, the way we come back is in different ways. We're going to show that to you. Because that's not that's another thing the camps ain't teaching y'all. They're not teaching y'all how people are going to get back. They're just saying everybody going to come get snatched by the chariots as soon as the nuclear destruction hits. And simultaneously, Cherish is going to snatch all the one third and the one forty four and take us all back into the land. That's a damn lie. We already know the destination of the one forty four is to be brought back and be brought before the throne. According to Revelation 14, right? The first fruits redeemed from the earth, saved from the hour of temptation that comes on the rest. They are the five wise virgins that go into the, the, the bridal chambers and the door was shut. And when the other five came back and knocked on the door saying open to him, he said, I don't know you. The five wise are the church of Philadelphia. The foolish, they got to go through this time frame. And the next parable in that chapter is how you dealt with your talents. Because they are the servants that are supposed to be gathering those nations that cleave to us and gleaning that great harvest. The Lord is going to judge us based on what we know and the end goal of what he wants in his mind is for all every knee to bow and for all things to flow into his son. And anybody who is scattering against him is going to be dealt with in any way, including the heathens that want to cleave to us. There are going to be a lot of heathens that's going to die. But the ones that the Lord has slated to cleave to us will be protected and survive. And we are going to be helped by them. We're going to go into all that. Let me let me fin finish reading this. So it says, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is a, like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while in the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, have devoured me and have crushed me and have made me an empty vessel. He have swallowed me up like a dragon. He have filled his belly with my delicate with my delicates. He has cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitants of Zion say? And my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. And those Chaldeans, those are the wise ones out of Edom, who of course are the head of the top of the pyramid, all the chief men of Edom, the Chaldeans that goes back into today would be your Rothschilds, your Rockefellers, your DuPonts, your Gettys, the Oppenheimers, all of those men, Amalek, right? That's why it says the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall say, because they're back over there in the land. It's Babylon and the Chaldea. That's this place and that's our land, those false inhabitants of our land. The, the, therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and a hissing without an inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat, I will make their feast. And I will make them drunken that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake, saith the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with the goats. That's important. How is Shashak taken and how is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How is Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? The sea has come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. 
her cities are de are a desolation, dry land in a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any man, son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Baal in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up. The nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall, and that's Babylon's false god, Baal, right? My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Where is your camp leader going to be during this time? Is what I want to know. Verse 46. Unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall come, both come one year, and after that and another shall a rumor come a rumor. And violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Now, we've heard a rumor from the Lord in Obadiah. That's what this is talking about. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. And that rumor is, you know, everybody coming against her and shooting those arrows. It's coming is what he's saying. You're hearing a rumor, uh, unless your heart faint for the rumor that shall be heard, because that rumor is that arrows are going to be going to be shot into this place. And you got to make sure that you are on that road out of here before it comes, right? Because he's going to do judgment and upon her graven images and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon for the spoilers shall come unto her from the north. See, that's when the missiles are going to come. And you got to be make sure that when those rumors start coming, that the scripture talks about in Obadiah. That there's an, a, a messenger sent among the heathen saying, let's rise up against her in battle because the they going to the heathen are going to see and support us along the way. Once they see the Lord is with us and we're going to let them know, go ahead and shoot your arrows into her. This is the rumor that's in Obadiah. And it's also here in Jeremiah 51. All right. Behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and on her own land shall be confounded, and her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come upon, upon her from the north, saith the Lord. Now let me real quick get Obadiah 1, because something's telling me that I need to show that. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, let us rise up against her in battle. That ambassador that is sent among the heathen is to the Medes because the Medes are the ones who finally do, right? From the north country. This is another precept. Where is that? Let me get cough references right quick and see if, see if that brings it out. Jeremiah 59 through 15. Okay. Set up a standard in the land, blow a trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, many Ashkenaz, and appoint a captain against her, cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillar. So you see, it's showing that we're calling heathens up against her. Um, in Jeremiah 51, 27. Prepare ye war against her, arise. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. So. That's Obadiah. The precept is showing uh, where we was reading in the book of Jeremiah 51, where there's an ambassador. That rumor comes, you know. 
it says in one year and, and again in another year because you know that there's three and a half years left and when we get snatched the 144,000 get snatched off the planet and spiritual power comes we already going we already know we got just a little bit more time left there's only going to be a couple years left to this thing right and the rumor is going to be spreading and we know that the hunters are going to be in charge and what's going on on the earth and they're going to bring order and everything but it's going to come a point in time where the decree is going to be sent forth for you know and that's the reason why the scripture says this and this you know this scripture must be brought out too um uh micah what is that is that micah 2 or zachariah 2 that's what it is right uh Zephaniah 2. Zeph Zephaniah 2, right? Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, as the chaff. You know, the chaff has to be separated from the wheat first. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now that decree is what we just read about, spoken of, that I, show, that I showed you in Obadiah. All right? That's that rumor that I just showed you back in Jeremiah 50. All right? So I just wanted to bring that out and, and clear that up real quick. Uh, let's finish off Jeremiah 51. My people go out of the midst of her and deliver every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. What is the soul? The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And when the Lord said, love him with all of our mind, all of our heart, and all of our soul, he's talking about the mind, the will, and the emotions. We're all spirits. We live in a physical body and we possess a soul. The soul is like the personality, your mind, you know, your thinker. It's your will. It's your chooser. And it's your emotions. So it's the, the thinker, the feeler, the chooser. It's what you think with, it's what you feel, how you feel about things, and what you choose. This is the soul. And everybody wants a soul. And the Lord wants your soul to choose him your mind your heart your soul he's saying to deliver every man his soul if your will if your mind and your will and your emotions are given to a camp or a camp leader then you are not going to deliver your soul come out of the midst of this place and deliver every man his soul from the fierce anger of the lord unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come in one year and after that in another year shall a rumor come and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon and her whole land shall be, be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her, right? The scripture says that stumbling stone that he set in Zion Whoever believe on him would not be ashamed or confounded, right? Then the heaven and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come on to her from the north, saith the Lord. Because that's what that whole thing about sending an ambassador among the heathen is about. As Babylon have caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall all the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off and let Jerusalem come to your mind. You see that? Let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame have covered our faces for strangers are coming to the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I would do judgment upon her graven images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come unto her, saith the Lord. 
a sound of a cry coming from Babylon and great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans, right? Because the Lord have spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her the great voice. When her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of their voice is uttered. Because the spoilers come upon her, even upon Babylon, and her mighty men are taken. Every one of their bowls is broken. For the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. And I will make drunken her princes, and her wise men, and her captains, and her rulers, and her mighty men. And they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not awake, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. The broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken and her high gates shall be burned with fire and the people shall labor in vain and the folk in the fire, they shall be weary. There's a lot of people I've seen a post today talking about how there's a lot of money to be had in this in this, you know, crisis we're in. Boy, these people just don't realize what's coming, man. <laughs> 